Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now, take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have Asteria with us here. She is from Bolivia originally. Listen to her fabulous story, running with no shoes, winning the competition. How does that happen? It sounds magical. Hi, Suzanne. Thank you for inviting. Anna is really so exciting for me to know that you're doing this. And, and I think it's very good job. That's another way you are helping some people. So let's start at the beginning. We have, take it from the Iron Woman, we have Asteria with us. And Asteria, tell us a little bit, where did the running start for you? Practically, it's so funny because at, in my childhood, it was very active. I was in uh, basketball. I was in gymnastic. I was in uh, soccer. All the games, the, the kids, the boys, they used to play on the neighborhood. And I was the only one at that age. Another girls on my age, I became like, they call tomboy. Yeah, I used to play anything they are playing, I used to play. I was the fourth in my family. We were uh, six. And I used to do whatever they do. I used to do. I was like a copycat. Very curious. Very. I used to say monkey see, monkey do. I used to do. I don't know. Probably that borns on us, with us. And always I was attracted to the jump rope. By then, we never had uh, dolls. But my favorite toy used to be a jump rope. Uh -huh. But, you know, it was not a real jump rope. And we have in my country some trees which the branches, they hang down. We used to break it up two branches and I used to tie it up. And that used to be my jump rope. And we used to compete who last um, more jumpings. Mm -hmm. If you win the jumping competition and you're going to get it one pint of fresh roasted peanuts. And we used to sit down on the street and, and eat the peanuts. We used to enjoy. Mm -hmm. It was very healthy very safe neighborhood. No, nothing. Everybody, we were like a family. And mm. at six in the morning, we used to go to vacation, no school. And we used to go to play basketball at six in the morning. And by 10 in the morning, volleyball. In the afternoon, we used to play soccer. That means our vacation, it was all day sports. And I never had no idea about track, about running. But naturally, I was running. I was preparing myself. And then when I was in high school, the last year of high school, he came a guy to the class and he said he was a runner. He used to do marathons mm -hmm. and he was a physical education teacher. And he said he wants to make that team from my school. I was in a private school. We were girls and boys. Uh, he took us from the classroom and he put us on the basketball court. I never had a uh, running shoes by then. Mm -hmm. And I never had, a, I never participated in PE classes because of my PE teacher, it was an overweight person. I said, I'm better than him and I'm not going to do PE classes. He was very nice. He was a friend of my mom. That's the reason he used to put me the, the grade just exactly to, to don't fail the year. But he knew it. She knew it. He was a lady. She knew it. I was good in sports. Mm -hmm. She knew it. That's why she always used to tell me, your mom is the, the reason that you don't fail the, the year. When I see the guy who said we're going to make the track team, no idea what was track. And no, I follow to the, all, all of us. We went to the basketball court and he made the, the hits, the lines, mm -hmm. and he put my height. And I was really so small, teeny yeah. tiny. I ended up on the first hit. He never explained everything. Just he said when the whistle is gonna 
you're going to run and you're going to pass the last finish line of the basketball court. I got it up. And we started running when I was just on the half of the basketball court. My shoes came out. What I did is I went back. I went back, picked up my shoes. Everybody passed me. And I ended up being the last girl. But I never paid attention. I was no sad or nothing. It was something normal. I, I knew it that all my classmates, they knew it that I had conditions. After we finished the, the test and we went back to the classroom and he wrote on the board all the names and I never saw my name. <clears throat> hey, I want to ask you a question. Why my name is not on the list, on the board? Mm-hmm. And he said, because I, you did this. When the shoes come out, you have to keep going. And you were at the front. You cannot come back, pick it up the shoes and then continue the race. Uh-huh. And then I said, but you never told us, you never explained. I said, but sadly, you really make that team. Yeah, it was a little um, strange for me. You see, I'm good, but how you don't want to put me on the team? Mm-hmm. And he said, because of all those people who they won, they're going to make that team. The following week, he came back and he says, okay, who's they were the name on the board? And they're going to come with me. I'm going to help you. And he used to come every week to coach the team. And I used to just to watch them, what they do. And I used to do at home every night. And then I said, I asked my dad, I said, dad, I want to be fast because they did that at the school, but I'm not on the team, but I want to go. Mm-hmm. I know I can win the race. And my dad says, you have to do this, you have to do that, because he was a soccer player. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I used to go with my dog for running. I used to tell the dog, I'm going to run. I'm going to give you a bread. <laughs> that dog, he was beating me. I was jumping rope. I was running with the dog. I was doing all the things my daddy was telling me. And until the, the, the day before is going to be the race, he came to the class and he said, okay, you're going to bring this, you're going to do this, and I'm going to meet you on the bus stop and we're going to go to the track. The track, it was in the city. I was in a little, a small town and I never went to the city. I was paying attention to all these instructions and, uh, and then I went back home and said to my dad, you know what? And, and all the time I see the guy, the coach, I used to tell him, please, can you put me on the list? Mm-hmm. I know I can do something good. And he used to say, <gasps> no, you are, you didn't make the team. You don't want to go. And then I said, what way I can do? I went home. I told my dad, I said, dad, I want to go to the place that coach called us because I know I can win. Follow what I'm going to tell you. And he told me how to take the little bus, where I'm going to get out. I'm going to walk around on the edge of the river. And he said, you're going to tell the driver to let you off on the bridge. And Mm -hmm. from there, you have to walk on the edge until you're going to see the light post, very four towers. He said, four towers. There, you're going to go inside that place is the track. And I said, I'm going to do that. And I did that. I took it myself. I took the bus. I I told the driver. And the driver says, hey, girl, here is your stop. And when I saw the towels, I was so happy. I said, oh, I'm right there. And I ran. And when I got it a place, it was huge. Because mm-hmm. at that stadium is, is big. Extra soccer fields. It has pools. It's a complex. It's, oh, my goodness, how I can go in. And suddenly I was a little worried. And uh, I looked at it far away. And I saw a girl, which it was waving me and calling me like a come. I ran into her and I said, hi. And he looked at me and said, oh, I don't know you. He said, what are you doing here? I said, there is a race, running race, but I don't know where is the track. In Spanish, we call pista, mm-hmm. atletica. And I said, I don't know where is the track. Do you see that door over there? He says, go over there and you're going to call inside there. You're going to see the, the track. You don't going to get lost. It's easy. And I ran over there and I did it. Got it and I was on the bleachers. And I looked at the track and I saw the girls, boys, some they were warming up and already I saw one hit running, all girls. And then I started to call my school mates. I said, hey, let me listen to the coach. And now one of them went and he says, there is hysteria. And the coach looked at me and says, no, 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 you don't going to run because you are not good. And I said, yeah, I know. I'm good. I'm going to show you. Mm. because." Yelling from the bleachers to the track, the guy who does the star, 
it was a German guy, very tall. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and he said in a little bad Spanish, he said, do you want to run? I said, yes, but I don't know how to get in there. And he says, okay, we're going to wait for you. And mm-hmm. I went inside, but no, no idea how to get it into the track. I came back again. I said, I don't know how to get it. What I did is I jumped the fence. I got, I land on the track. And I said, I'm going to go. I want to run. I said, okay. It was one line empty. And I said, okay, you want to go between those girls? And did you run before? I said, no. But I know I can win them. I can beat them. I said, I was so positive. I don't know why. I pull it off my skirt and I pull it off my shoes. No running shoes, no be running, no, no kind of sports shoes. And I jump and he looked at me and he said, Are you gonna run barefoot? I say, Yes, I don't have running shoes. And he says, Okay, it was a, a dirt track. I saw how the girls they were doing the little holes with the, with, with the spikes. I was looking at them, I said, I'm gonna do the same thing with my toes. I did a little <laughs> bit. And I said, what I'm going to do when the gun is going to go off, you have to run. You have to run straight, don't cross the lines. And I was just waiting and I get off. When I got it 50 meters, I saw like my body was moving ahead of the other girls. When I got it 75 meters, I saw myself in front of the group. (gasps) Oh, I was so happy. I put more. I moved more. (laughs) I was so excited. And then the first thing I did is look for the codes. And I said, you see, I told you, I told you I was good in running. And he looked at me, but now you have to run again. No problem. I know I can beat anyone. So positive. And then he said, why are we waiting for the semifinals? You have to do the long jump. And I said, what is long jump? He took me to the pit and he showed me how to do it. I said, I can do it. And the long jump, they call and I went over there. We did it jumps and I qualified for the finals in long jump. I was so excited. I was so proud. I was happy. I think I had all the feelings, happy feelings. And then they called for the semifinals for the 100 meters. I went over there and I won my heat again. Oh my goodness, I'm good. Just myself, right? Mm-hmm. I was so out. I wanted to cry, but I was at the same time I was so nervous. I was so very humble, no idea. I looked at the coach. I said, "What do you think?" I said, "You could now. You have to do again, and then you have to go to the long jump. Do you think I can win? I don't know." He said, "Because at the finals is gonna be with with girls from different schools." But I said, "But I'm fast. I have a speed." I said. Yeah, I know. He said, but don't look back because you look back. I said, okay. And I won the finals. I was so excited. Oh my goodness. I thought I got it, everything. (laughs) I was dancing. I was jumping. I was so happy. And there I saw the journalist came. They took me pictures. Everybody was so surprised from a little small town. They were looking at me, what do you do? Who coach you? I said, no, nobody coached me, just by myself. I play basketball, I play, I was telling what I do. I run with my dog, I do jump rope. And then they said, now you have to go to the long jump. I said, okay, what do you think you're going to do? I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I don't know why came that to my mind. And I went to the long jump and, you know, I won the long jump. Everybody was surprised. More pictures. And then the coach says, we're going to do the realize. And you're going to run. What is realize? He explained me. Somebody's going to pass to her, to her, to her. And then you're going to be the last person. You're going to be the anchor. I said, okay. And we did the relay at my school. We won the relay. Oh, my goodness. I was like uh, walking on the sky. And they gave me uh, gold murals. By then, you know, I thought seriously it was gold. I was so happy. I was thinking, oh. (laughs) Familiar, <laughs> but they were so big, nice mirrors. And then I said, "What are we gonna do now?" We took the bus back again to the home, and I told my dad. My dad was so happy, my mm-hmm. family. And I went to sleep. I was so tired. And the next morning, five in the morning, somebody was knocking the the garage, calling my dad. They used to call my dad uh, Negro. Oh, Negro, Claude, Negro, Claude, my dad went out and he said, what happened? He was so scared. He says, look at the newspaper. Your daughter is on 
front. Mm -hmm. And they took me so many pictures and they put a one picture, a small little town girl, barefoot with a braids. I used to wear braids and it came to the competition and it conquered three bands, 100 meters, long jump and the real life. My daddy was so happy, so proud. But that's it. It was, that's it. I thought it was the end of everything. I thought it was like a that happened and I'm not going to do no more. And then the days come and my dad, they came to ask if I can go to do the trainings on that track. But my dad says no. By then it was a little jealousy. My dad, by 60s, 70s, the girls, we, we were not allowed to go by ourselves a sports or complex or something. He never wanted to send me by myself to do the training. Luckily, and two months later, Another friend came home with a newspaper and he says, look at Negro, Claudia, your, the name of your daughter is on the team of the city. He's going to, they put it on the team and I think he's going to go to the national representing the city. Mm -hmm. He took me back to the track and they told him that, yes, I was on the team and that that's the reason they wanted me to do the training in the city. Mm -hmm. Then I got it a little bit more what was about running, about long jump. And, uh, and then came the national and they took it us to another city. And we went to the nationals and I won at the nationals too. And I became national champion. It was like, like a, a little dream for me. And I was there and then I said, oh my goodness, that means I have something on me. At the nationals, they didn't allow me to run barefoot. The federation and the officials, they came and they said, no, you, you can know you are not allowed to run there. And I said, but I don't have running shoes. And they gave me spikes. But a month later, they came and they said, you have to give back the spikes because I just, we, we let you use only for the competition. Tell your parents if they can buy that. Mm -hmm. But my dad, my mom, my parents, they couldn't afford to buy that. I was so sad. And then the guy says, don't be sad that just later your parents, they can kind of save a little money and they mm -hmm. give it to you because you really, you are good, Alint, and, and you, came, you came from nowhere. You are so positive. You have a talent and maybe, and I said, okay. And that's the reason I started to running. The big point it was that when I used to play basketball, Sometimes we used to lose the game and I used to get so upset oh, and I used to be so sad. I never wanted to lose. I never wanted to, to be in that situation. And then I said, I think it's better for me to do just track. If I'm going to win, it's because I'm training. And I got into the college and I wanted to go to Argentina. I Always I wanted to be nurse, but uh, in yeah. Brazil or Chile. Yeah. And my mom, my mom says, no, you don't. You are too, too young. Thank you so much, Asteria, for being with us and telling us your story. Take it from the Iron Woman. What a very cool story. What an inspiration. Be positive. Anything works when you are positive. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. There is something for everybody. We hear from runners. We hear from entrepreneurs people with great stories. What are you taking away? 